I want to share this today and um, it's a little bit of a theme that's going through me at the moment. I want to wage war on pain, poverty, trouble and sorrow. Amen? I really believe that it's time for the church to wage war on it. Amen? How many people, you know, it's, it's not enough to cop it. It's not enough to turn the other cheek. This is not what that meant. We've got to wage war on pain, poverty, sorrow, man. Why don't we just stand as a church right now and pray and believe God, amen? But why don't we just stand up and say, the devil, you're a liar and a thief and a cheat, and we break your power in Jesus' name. We take authority out of you. Come on, you can pray your own prayer. Come on, Father, in Jesus' name, we come and we take authority in Jesus' name over pain, over poverty, over sorrow, over trouble, over all the rubbish of the devil and everything that he wants to put on us. Father, I pray right now we command, we command, I thank you, Father, that your word declares that you gave us authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the works of Satan. And we know that that is the work of Satan. We know that pain is the work of Satan. We know that poverty is the work of Satan. We know that sorrow is the work of uh, Satan. We know that sickness is the work of Satan. So, my God, you gave us authority over the work of Satan. And right now we take that authority in Jesus' name and we break the power of it. We break this power. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we plead the blood of Jesus right now. We plead the blood of the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen and Amen. We've got to, I believe we've got some things to do, and I believe that we're going to do them in Jesus' name. Amen. Breaking the power over pain, poverty, trouble, sorrow. There's a lot of sickness around. There's a lot of things that are happening. But we know that, that, the, that the devil never triumphs. The devil never wins. No matter how it looks, the devil doesn't win. Amen. We're singing a song today about 10,000 years and more. You know, friend, uh, it, it's an amazing thing. But last week I, I was speaking about uh, a man by the name of Jabez. And Jabez changed his destiny by calling on the name of the Lord. And I believe it's time for the church not just, you know, just to really call on the name of the Lord. To really get a hold of something in the realm of the Spirit. And, and cry out to God and believe for God to, to somehow or other uh, manifest Himself in, in, in an amazing way. Now this, this, uh, this story goes, it's found in uh, 1 uh, Chronicles 4 and uh, verse 9. And it says, Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez because, uh, saying, because I bore him in pain. I bore him in pain. Jabez called on the God of Israel. What did he do? He called on the God of Israel. He didn't tolerate, he didn't allow his life, he didn't want to cause pain, he didn't want to cause trouble, he didn't want to cause strife. He said, God, I want a, I want a change in my life. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that God comes to change us. Amen? Changes us from glory to glory. He comes to do a work in our lives. And Jabez cried out to God and he said, God, I want you to do some things in my life. I, I don't want to be a pain. I don't want to be a problem. I don't want to be a, a discourager. I don't, I don't want to cause all this stuff. I, I want to do something different. And it says he called upon the name of the Lord. Um, saying, oh, that you might bless me indeed. It's okay to ask God to bless you. You know that? It's okay to say, God, would you bless me today? God, would you bless my life today? Would you bless my coming in? Would you bless my God now? Because how many people know that that's what He wants to do? He wants to bless you. He wants to do whatever He can. Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. Friends, sometimes we can be so small-mindedness. We, we can be so sort of content with the confinement that we live in. We can, we can say, well, I'm just a shy person, or I, I've got no talents, or I've got no this, or I've got no that. And you can be just so content, or, or, or just allow yourself to be confined into that small area, uh, and, and saying, well, I can't really do much for God because I don't have this, or I don't have that. 
But what we're going to do is say, God, would you enlarge my territory? Would you expand me? Would you open something to me? I don't know about you, but I, I, I've got a testimony that, that where my life was, but that, that blew me out of the water when God started to enlarge my territory. You know, God wants to enlarge your territory. He wants to take you to dizzy heights. He wants to take you to places you've never, ever been before. He wants to do things in your life that you could not imagine or think. He, 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 wants to, he wants to break down the walls. I once said that, that in that confinement that I lived in, if you remember, I, I was living in a very, very tight, confined area, trying to protect myself, trying not to, to make a fool of myself, not to, you know, not to do this or that. And I, and I built a wall around myself. It was a wall of protection. And if you remember, I was saying that one day God opened my eyes and as I was building my wall, I looked around and it was the devil that was making the mortar and passing me the bricks. See, it's the enemy that wants you to build a wall around your life. God wants to break down those walls and He wants to extend the borders of your tent. Amen. He wants to extend the borders of your territory. He wants to do things that you don't do. You know, wild things. He wants to do exceedingly, abundantly, above more than you could even imagine or think. He's an amazing God. And, and, and here he is. He said, would you, would you, uh, would you indeed enlarge my territory? That your hand would be with me. That you would keep me from evil. That I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. Friend, there's a scripture in the Bible that says you have not because you ask not. And I want to tell you some time to start to cry out to God and start to call upon his name. We, we know that Jabez's name meant pain, sorrow, grief, and trouble. See, there's keys, I believe, for, for our success. There's keys that will, I believe, enlarge the borders of our tent. There are keys there because God has already done it for us. God has already given us everything. So there's keys that God wants to give you and me that we can put that key into that lock and unlock that door that might have been locked for years and years and years over your life. And I believe one of the greatest keys that you and I have to have is we have to have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Because we're living in a, in a time, we're living in, in a, we've got so much data coming out today, we've got God Channel, we've got, uh, you know, we've got Google, we've got Google. <laughs> We've got any, all these different avenues and if you want to know about something, you can just Google it and you get all these opinions and these opinions may not be God opinions. And what we've got to be careful of today is what we hear, what we allow to, to, to establish itself in our heart. I want, I want the Word of God to establish itself. I believe that God has already put in His Word everything that He's going to do. It's not going to be, you know, God's not going to come in, 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 in necessarily uh, in, 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 a, in a, what do you call it, in a crystal. There are a lot of people that would like you to believe that. A lot of people there that, that are into, you know, different uh, uh, religions and different things. We've got to have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. If you haven't got that ear to hear, well, we, we just become tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, every philosophy, every tradition, whatever it might be. And, and I believe that we, when we hear it, it will touch us in the Spirit and we'll know that it's God. Amen. We've got to have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying, uh, not the accuser of the brethren, not, not the enemy that wants to sow a seed. In Jeremiah 32, 17, I'm just going to go over a little bit of last week. Remember that scripture, Our Lord God, Thou hast made the heaven and the earth by Thy great power, and, thou out, and Thy outstretched arm. And there's nothing too hard or too difficult for You. What we've got, to, I believe that we've got to come back to some basics. We've got to realize that God is God, and that He is the Creator of the heaven and earth. That God spoke the worlds into existence. He made the worlds out of nothing. He fashioned them. We've got to establish foundations in our life. Our Lord God, Thou has made the heaven and the earth by Thy great power and Thou Thy outstretched arm. And there's nothing too hard for You. 
I want to say, friend, there is nothing too hard for God. God can do whatever He wants. He can do anything. Amen. That He made the worlds out of nothing. He can make a, a champion out of, out of a failure. He can make a, a preacher out of a drunk. He, he can take a prostitute and, and make her into a, like a chaste virgin. He, he, can, he, can, he can take a life and fashion it and shape it and form it and make it into something beautiful. Amen. All I had to offer Him was brokenness and strife. But somehow He made something beautiful out of my life. It's, it's what we've got to understand that, that your life and your problem and your difficulty, whatever it might be, is not too hard for God. Once we establish that in, in our lives, we start looking for the answer and not an excuse. Not a loser's limb, not, not a circumstance or a situation that will cause problems. Now the scripture that I use, that was called unto me and I will answer you and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. See, I believe it's a time to start calling out, crying out to God. We can passively sit by and say, oh God, uh, you know, all this is happening and, and there's problems over there in the Middle East and things like that. But I would tell you, nothing's going to happen until somebody starts crying out to God. So somebody starts calling out to God. Start saying, God, you know, we, we'll, you will answer us. Call unto me and I will answer you. And listen to this. And show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Things that you don't know at the moment. There's things that you don't know about your life. There's things that we don't know that God's about to do. But God says, if you start crying out to me, I'm going to reveal them to you. I'm going to show you things that you do not know. I was just thinking about the, the other night of the prayer meeting. We were praying these, these two scriptures. We're crying out to God. We're saying, God, come on. We're calling upon you. We're asking you to show us great and mighty things. And I was reminded of 120 men and women in, a, in an upper room that were crying out to their God. That they didn't know what was going to happen. But he said, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. And all of a sudden while they're praying and while they're, they're, they're singing their songs, all of a sudden there was a sound of a mighty rushing wind that came from heaven. They weren't expecting that. But God said, I'm going to show you something that you've never ever seen before. I'm going to start doing things that I've never, that you've never seen me do before. But I'm going to do them anyhow. And it's going to be according to my word. It's going to be according to my word. Amen. Don't go look at the supernatural signs and wonders. And, and I believe that one of the great dangers in this life today is that we can just be looking for supernatural signs and things like that. That, you know, I, I believe that if, if we're open to God, God will just reveal it. We want God, amen. I want God, amen. You want, how many people want God? Don't get to say, God, I want you. I want you. And here they were, there's 120 people in an upper room. And all of a sudden the place, I, I don't know, but if there's, if there's winds and that, I can imagine that there was thundering and lightnings and there was flashes and, and stuff going on all over the place. You know what I mean? They would have been, you know, they, they would have been bewildered. They would have been so taken up by the, it says that the, this wind filled the whole place where they were sitting. Can you, can you imagine this? This wind blowing in, in there, and all of a sudden there, there's, there's tongues of fire on their heads. Can, and, and, and they're seeing things that I've never seen that before. And here's now, and now all of a sudden they start to speak, and, and they're, they're speaking in a, in a different language. And there's people all around that are listening and watching and carrying on, and, and they're seeing all this going on. And people all of a sudden can hear these people glorifying God in their language. But the interesting thing was much only like the disciples didn't know what they were saying, but the people that could hear could hear and understand what they were saying. I want to show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. You know, it's an amazing thing as you read that scripture. It says that people were amazed, people were perplexed, people, some mocked and some this and some that. Because why? Because they were experiencing something that they'd never seen before. They were experiencing a phenomena that had never happened before. But a man of God stood up and said, I want you to know it's not what you think, but this is that. There's, a, there's something about this is that. This is that spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God said, I'm going to pour out my spirit. 
Friend, I'm going to tell you, this is that is going to happen to this church. It's going to happen to the churches around. Amen. It's going to be an outpouring of God. It's going to touch the churches. It's going to cause a great phenomenon. We know there that, that at this particular time, there are literally thousands of people ushered into the kingdom as a result of that. Amen. This wind came from heaven. A fire sat on them. Something that they never learned. They, they started speaking a language that they never learned. An amazing thing started to happen. I don't think they experienced anything like that before. In Mark chapter 10, 46, it talks about a blind man who was sitting by the roadside begging. Amazing story, this one. He started to call out on the name of the Lord. The Bible, as you, as you read it in Mark 10, 46, it says that, that Jesus was leaving Jericho and there was a great crowd, a great crowd gathered were, were going with him. A great crowd. Can you, can you imagine what a great crowd would sound like? Would, would there be a, do you think there'd be a lot of noise? Or do you think they'd just walk around? Now there would have been noise, there would have been shouting, there would have been jumping, there would have been this and there would have been that. But in the midst of all this, there was a man who had been blind from his birth, most probably. Here he is sitting on the roadside in his beggar's outfit. And he cried, he spoke to somebody, he said, what's going on? I can hear all the noise, I can hear the crowd. What is going on? And they said, it's Jesus of Nazareth. He's passing by. And immediately this man began to cry out. He began to call on the name of the Lord. Friend, I'm going to tell you, when Jesus is around, start calling on the name of the Lord. Amen. When Jesus is around, start crying out. And you know what he said? He said, I'll never ever leave you nor forsake you. So it doesn't matter how you feel, what's going on, he's there. And you can start crying out to God. Amen. Jesus. He started, he started going out, Jesus, son of David. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I don't know how many times I've prayed that prayer. I don't know how many times I've been there with tears rolling down my face. I don't know how many times I've been, Jesus, Son David, have mercy on me. You ever been there when you got to cry out like that? We've all, you know, Robinson Crusoe, we've all been there. We've all been there, amen. But Jesus is there listening. And you know what happened there is that the crowd that was mostly making more noise than anything else stopped him. Said, be quiet. And I was amazed and I think, why would anybody bother? Because there would have been lots of people shouting. There would have been lots of people yelling. There would have been even the lynch mob. There would have been the, the ones there that didn't agree with what was going on. There would have been the mockers. There would have been the, the complainers. There, there would have been so much noise. But you see, everybody that was there knew that this Jesus, his mother and father, were Mary and Joseph. But this man knew something different, amen. He knew that this was not Mary and Joseph's son. This was the Son of God. This came through the lineage of, of, of through David, through that, through that line that God spoke about, that out of, out of there would come one, the Messiah, the Savior. And so this young man, this blind man, that had more insight and more sight than most of all those other people who were around about him, he saw something in the realm of the Spirit and he began to cry out, Jesus, Son of da David. Jesus, Son of David. And they didn't want him to say that. They, the devil didn't want that out. He told them to shut up. I believe that's why they told him to be quiet. Not because he was making a noise. Don't talk about the Son of David. We don't want anybody to know that's who he is. We just want everybody to think he's a prophet. We just want everybody to think he's a good guy. No, this is the Son of God. I want to tell you, friends, today, Jesus is not just your prophet. He's just not your healer. He's just not your deliverer. He is the Son of God. Hallelujah. He's a child of the Most High God. And that's why we worship Him. And that's why we honor Him. And that's why we respect Him. You respect God today. You respect the Son of God. Just give Him your life. Give Him your worship. Give Him your praise. Give Him your best. Amen. Jesus is back, passing by. And they started to tell him to be quiet, but what he did was he started just calling out the all. I don't tell you, friends, it's not a time to be quiet. It's not a time to listen to, to, the, to the bleeding of the sheep or, the, or what society is saying or what, what religious circles are saying. You've just got to come into church now and have nice social meetings. No, friends, I'm going to tell you that there's a time of war. We declare war on pain. We declare war on poverty. We declare war on sickness. We declare war on faith. 
Amen. We declare war on the feet in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to do that just sitting in the bathtub having a 20 seconds prayer time. Or between commercial breaks. See, there's prayer and there's prayer. There's prayer and there's prayer. Religious prayers don't work. You can pray religious prayers, but they won't work. Son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, touch me. Call unto me and I'll answer you and show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. As this man is crying out to Jesus, crying out, have mercy on me. All of a sudden Jesus stops and he says to the, to, to the crowd, where is he? He says, over there. He said, come and get him. You get him to me. And he said, what do you want? He said, that I might receive my sight. You know what he did then? You know what Jesus did then? And this is where I believe we miss it. Where we miss it. Jesus says, go your way. You are healed. Now, I don't know if you with blind people, but they don't know where to go. <laughs> because they can't see. In other words, what Jesus said to him was do something you can't do. Do something you can't do. You see, if we're going to break through, if we're going to rise up, we can't stay in our little box. We've got to kick the box, the walls out of the box. And we've got to start doing something that we haven't done before. We've got to do something that you might say, I said yesterday is impossible, we've got to start doing it today. It was something that you could, couldn't do yesterday. Start doing it. That's why so many healing evangelists, when they, when they pray for you, immediately they say, will you check yourself out? Will you move that body? Will you do something? Do something that you've never done before. Move that limb that you haven't moved. Move that leg that you haven't moved. If you don't do that, you just go home and say, nothing's changed. If you say that, guess what? You nullify the whole, the whole procedure. You've got to do something that you've never done before. He said, go your way. Go your way. Your faith has made you well. Go your way. How many times in the Bible uh, uh, do we see these stories? I, I believe that, that, you know, with God all things are possible. You have made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. And outstretched arm. And there is nothing too hard for you. If I can indelibly print that inside of me, if I can indelibly print that inside of me, and I can say, God, you're going to have a move of your spirit on planet Earth, or hell will have to freeze over. You'll have it because you said you're going to have it. You said you're going to pour out your spirit. You said you're going to do this. You said you're going to do that. You're going to raise up a great army. You're going to, you're going to raise up an exceeding great army. I believe that God is going to have a church, a powerful church. A church without spot or wrinkle. You know what it says in Hebrews 11, uh, 13, verse 8? It says, Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. Do you believe that? Jesus hasn't changed. He's still the same. Jesus still stays. Jesus, if Jesus still, how many people believe that Jesus still saves? How many people then believe that if he still saves, he still heals? If he still heals, he still delivers. He still sets people free, amen. Because Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Jesus said, these things that I do, you can do also. So Jesus wants us to do what he did. But if we don't believe that he did them, if we don't believe that he does it today, if we don't believe, if we, okay, he saves, but he doesn't heal anymore, he doesn't deliver anymore, he doesn't do this anymore, he doesn't do that anymore, well then when he says, these things that I do, you shall do also, we will be limited in what we can do. But if I believe that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and everything that he did back there is still very much alive today. Do you believe that? Because that's what it's all about today, isn't it? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus still saves, he still heals, and he still delivers. And he still supplies all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Do you believe that? Call unto him. You see, the thing is, you can't have healing without the healer. You can't have deliverance without the deliverer. You can't have freedom without the freedom giver. 
I'm talking today about keys that will help us unlock the door. You've got to have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God saying. Not what Neil saying, not what somebody else is saying, not what Creflo Dollar saying, God bless him. Not what Brian used to say, it's what the Spirit of God saying. Is that okay? What did, what did Brian used to say this morning about faith is sandwiched between love and grace? That's worth what I like now. Faith is sandwiched between love and grace. It sounds like you've been listening to my messages. He's always listening to my messages. You know, Psalm 105 verse 6 says, Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Why don't you throw your hands in the air and praise God for me? Come on. Come on. Hey, hallelujah. Hey, praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Amen. Let everything that hath breath praise you, Jesus. Praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you. See, you know, there was, I don't know how to say this, but, but I was, I, I just, I was in and out of this thing, pulling stuff in and out of my car. In boxes and goodness knows what else. And I was just in here, the Catholics had been in there before us, and then we got wiped out by the by the skeps, skep, set, what is it, the scepter thing. The lady came around the corner, she had this great big thing, and then we wiped out. You know what? You've got to miss the like, Waterloo by the, by the cross, <laughs> whatever it was. But I was just walking out there, and all of a sudden, I, I just wanted to put my hands in there. Just want to praise God, you know what I mean? It's crazy, okay. I know I'm crazy. I don't know. I don't know why I even told you that. You just now you know I'm crazy. Before you thought I was. That everything that has breath of praise the Lord. See, doubt and unbelief stops God's word from being fulfilled. Jesus rebuked the fig tree. Remember that story? He went, he was looking for a fiend and he wanted a fig or wanted something to eat. He went over to the fig tree and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and there was no figs on it. And, and Jesus cursed it. He said, no man will ever eat from you again. I don't know, I guess Thomas would have been there. He would have looked at it and said, it's the same to me. Didn't, that one didn't work. Next day, they were coming out of the city and here was that same tree withered from the roots up. Now, let me just explain this. We have got roots. You can call it the root of bitterness. Cancer has roots. Different things have roots. Unbelief that's in our heart and things like that have roots. Somewhere, something that failed, something that it had a root there and out of that grew this unbelief or negativity or, or lack of trust. Can you, can you catch my drift here? They have roots. Sicknesses and diseases have roots. Some, some sicknesses are because people can't forgive somebody. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you and many sleep. Because of unforgiveness, because of not discerning the Lord's body, because of this or because of that. So there's roots. So what happens at times, sure, we see, we see the ones there that, that, that come out, yeah, 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 and they're jumping around and they're totally delivered, amen? And we think, well, that must be how you have to have it. I want to tell you this. If we had faith as a grain of mustard seed, that when we call out to God, when we walk on this altar, this is holy ground out here, amen? This is holy ground. It's holy ground where you're standing to. But it's like holy ground. When you come out on an altar and you cry out to God, I've seen people with tears rolling down their faces. I've seen people reaching out to God. God, I want you so much. God, I want to be healed. I want to be delivered. I want to be free from this cursed thing that attacks me. I want to be free from this anger. I want to be free from this bitterness. I want to be free from this whatever it might be. And, and you pray a prayer over them, the prayer of faith. And they, they look at themselves and they say, I'm no different. Now look, if we had the faith of a grain of mustard seed and we thought, yes, 
I've got what I requested because God, you said, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. That that thing, that root of bitterness, that, that whatever it might be, that cancer, that sickness, that disease, as I left, it might look any difference, but it's dying from the roots up in there. There's a work that's going on in there. That something's happened. And it's a little bit like that turning point that, that, uh, that came out the other day. We, we could just, that was last week and we could just forget about it. I'm not going to forget about that. I'm going to keep quoting that. I'm going to keep that in front of me. I'm going to keep that before my eyes. I'm going to keep that in my heart. I'm going to hide that in my heart. I'm going to speak it out of my mouth. I'm going to say, God, there's going to come a turning point. Not just for this church, but for the church that's throughout Australia, amen. That's not a word for here, it's a word for the church. We're only one little bit of the church. That thing started to die from the roots up. When they went past the next day, they saw the tree with it. Dead. That's how you've got to see things, I think. That thing inside, that bitterness, whatever it is that's holding us back, whatever it is that's, that's stopping us, whatever it is, when we curse it, it's cursed. When we speak, when we lift it to Jesus, it's dealt with, amen. It's done, it's finished, it's over. Do you believe that today? I believe that with every fiber of my being. I believe that's what it's all about. Rebuke the fig tree. Might have said nothing happened, but something did happen. It withered from the roots up. You know what Jesus said there on that, that whole thing? When, when they saw it, and they looked at it, and they said, isn't that the tree? Isn't that the tree? You'll find that in Mark 11, 20, and it's for time's sake. He said, isn't that the tree? Did you curse? He said, yes. And then he said, Jesus said to them, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Friends, have, this is a key. Have faith in God. Have an ear to hear. Careful what you're listening to. Speak it out. Call on the name of the Lord. Call unto God and He will answer you. See, God's ways are not our ways. Jesus spoke and immediately the roots began to wither. You can't see it, but by faith, Jesus knew what was happening. I believe that a lot of miracles are aborted through doubt and unbelief. A lot of miracles are aborted because we don't see it happening right now. Talk about keys to victory. Jesus told the, 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 that young man, the, 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 the paraplegic that they brought. They brought him on a bed. It's in Matthew chapter 9, 1 through 7. They brought this young man. He, was, he, he couldn't walk, obviously. And Jesus spoke. When he spoke, he said, Oh, your sins have given you. People all got cranky because they, they said, How, Who's got the right to do this? And who's got the right to do that? And he said, I just want you to know I've got the power over sin and sin. So is it easy to say this? Is it easy to say that? But then, here's, you, you gotta, you got to get this picture. Because this is how, this is a key for your success too. Here's a man that could not walk. But Jesus said to him, pick up your bed and walk. He's telling him to do something that he's never done before. Friend, if you want to break out of the whatever stronghold, You've got, you've got to start doing something that you've never done before. Can you catch it? Can, is this okay? Am I just talking to myself in this front chair? <laughs> you've got to start doing something you've never done before. And that's what Jesus said. Here he is. He said, pick up your bed and walk. <laughs> hey, don't you know who I am? I'm the guy that can't walk. Didn't you see me coming in? I saw you coming in, but I also saw you in the spirit going out. I saw you coming in, but I also see you going out. Free. You want to be free or do you want to go out the way you came in? See, we've got to respond. We've got to respond. We've got to do what Jesus said to do. We've got to do what Jesus said to do. Father, I'm asking you right now that you'd go way beyond what I've ever said. Lord, you, you, you would open our ears to what the Spirit of God is saying. You'd open our eyes to the realm of the Spirit that's more real than anything else. 
You help us to understand, Lord, that we've got to break some strongholds around our own life. Lord, we're coming against death and failure and defeat and sickness and disease. We're waging war on that. But Lord, usually the enemy has laid a foundation and our life has got to be broken up. And I'm asking you right now, in Jesus' name, that you would break the strongholds in our lives. Set us free, Jesus, to do whatever you want us to do. In Jesus' name, amen.